next session is going to be with uh, uh, Marianne Muller. Uh, Marianne Muller is artist harnessing memory friction within the corporal and the architectural. She's professor at the Zurich University of the Arts since 2007. Recent institutional solo exhibitions include Museum of Photography Ekaterinenburg, Centro de Artes Visuales in Coimbra, and Kuz Museum Bern. She's been recipient of uh, numerous international residencies and multiple Swiss art awards. Gertian Kuchen. Um, Gertian is a visual artist living and working in Amsterdam. Uh, for his work, uh, Kuchen performs extensive research before he photographs the objects involved in parts, which he later conjuncts into one print at almost actual size or even a larger at few times. Both in solo and group exhibitions, his work has been exhibited widely in the Netherlands and abroad. Among the most recent, uh, we can mention solo exhibition at the Stedelijk Museum, Sheedam, and Monument Monumentalism, the municipal art acquisition of the Stedelijk Museum, uh, Amsterdam. His work has, has been part in exhibition, shown at George Eastman House, Rochester, Aperture Gallery, New York, and Alte Pinacotheca in Munich. And then Takashi Oma, sorry, I have to turn the page. Takashi is a visual artist based in Tokyo, and since 1990s, his practice started to be focused on territorial analysis, which he carried out uh, first in Japan and then around the world. He refers to his photographic approach as a new documentary, which captures a subject unemotionally and timelessly to create a feeling of distance between image and, and viewer. I'd love to mention uh, some works we develop and exhibitions together with Takashi here at the CCA after his encounter with the work of Le Corbusier and Pierre Jeanneret in Chandigarh in 2013 while producing a photograph commissioned by the CCA. Oma decided to expand his research and photograph the spatial and perceptual richness of the wind windows and other works by Le Corbusier across the world. This research was actually the subject of book published by the CCA in 2019 and of an exhibition curated by Louis Desi in 2020 in our octagonal gallery. His work has been displayed in uh, several museums around the world and love to mention a solo exhibition in Kanazawa at the 21st Century Museum. So please join me welcoming on stage uh, Gertian, Marianne and Takashi together with Bas and Stefano. Thank you. Takashi, we, we met in Tokyo. We had the studio visit with you. And uh, for every, every artist we'd, uh, we, we invited and we discussed, we chose a project. In your case, we chose, uh, and we started with the waves and the mushrooms. So back to books. The waves, we found it uh, particularly interesting because the first, the first publication of the waves was a magazine, which is Relax. And then it, uh, it was uh, published in several other uh, occasions in different forms and uh, in different moments. And sometimes with the same photographs in, uh, in the publication. So maybe it's interesting to start with, uh, with your, uh, your approach to, to magazines, your approach to publications, and maybe to know uh, if you want to make a, like a short description of what the waves are about. What is the project, The Waves? I think uh, photography can be a uh, lot of different form. So I have an interest about uh, uh, sometimes can be put in um, magazines, can be we can make uh, photo books. And then even, you know, of course in a uh, uh, museum, Hanging, hanging the wall. So I think uh, different can be transformed uh, one images. So that's uh, my most uh, interest, the point of the uh, photography. And the waves, uh, we also were discussing about uh, it's something that repeats um, forever. And uh, you were also describing it uh, as uh, you go in the same beach in a way and uh, you pretend uh, you're taking the photographs of the same waves forever. So this is also something that uh, maybe has a relation with photography as, uh, as a language. 
we were thinking uh, and talking about the, the decisive moment. So maybe it's something that uh, that uh, it's nice to to sit, to to hear from you. So the relation of photography today with the with the decisive moment as an embedded condition for photography. If there is a decisive moment. Nice tea ceremony there. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I photographs uh, waves at the always uh, in uh, winter at the same beach, almost same beach. So you know, uh, photographer always like uh, uh, hunters looking for subjects. <laughs> but uh, this project is uh, different. I just wait the uh, same beach and then wave is coming. Always different wave is coming. So I just uh, capture them. So I don't think uh, too much, or oh, this is a uh, decisive moment or not. I just uh, uh, photographs like uh, automat automatically. And then I prefer find uh, after the develop the film, and then I found, I really like a, a surprise, making a surprise. So, oh, this time the waves looks like this. Uh, by after the uh, photography is developed. I think that at the moment is uh, my uh, pleasure time. And the different form of the books. I mean, the waves, they appear, the, okay, we said that the first was a magazine, and then they appear in different forms. So, why? As I said, uh, can be, photographic images can be different form. I think it's a, a nature of the photography media. People, we are artists, so always try to make an original one, uh, image, one print. So, but you know, if, we, if you uh, decide this image is this size, but it's a, you know, can be any size. I think it's a, a nature of uh, photography media. So uh, that's why uh, that's why I would like to uh, interest about photography media. Can be uh, going to uh, magazine and can be going to proper photo books. So. Can you explain how it's how you started with uh, with the waves? Because I, I only knew one book, and then when we visited your uh, your studio, there were mm. all of a sudden five uh, yeah. different ones, mm. uh, and they all represent another year, mm. uh, but the same beach, but the same wave. Mm. It's not the same wave, but mm. kind of the same wave, but a different time mm. and a different form. But how did it start? From what wish? Actually, uh, first of all, I didn't, maybe I didn't uh, think about uh, this kind of project. But you know, a uh, lot of uh, any opportunity I had. So I made a lot of type of uh, photo book and photo brochures and um, like a zine or magazine. So I think uh, I found later uh, oh, this is very uh, interesting uh, approach uh, of the way of uh, photography. So I always uh, found later. So first of all, maybe I don't I don't have uh, any very strong uh, concept and very strong uh, aim. So I really like. Uh, found later, oh, this is very interesting. It's the same as uh, uh, taking photographer, t taking photography. And I mean, we have asked you to show two works in the exhibition. Mm -hmm. uh, here, we, we can talk about this a little bit later. 
Um, so we asked you about the waves and the mushrooms. And to us it was clear that they are somehow connected, but then we spoke to you and you said, mm, maybe, <laughs> maybe connected. Um, because it has to do with, this, with, with the idea of photographing nature. It's, it's, not, it's not very easy to photograph nature. Would you agree what, or what would you not agree? What do you mean, not, uh, not easy? Because it very quickly represents uh, something that, that, we, that we did not make. And I think the things that, that we have made, we are somehow more accustomed to it to, to kind of make again, to photograph again. So things that, that we have changed, built, or adapted, we also feel that, that we can photograph it. If you photograph something of nature, it's, you know, who's the author? First question, is it about the subject? So how do you, how do you decide that, in this case, the mush but the mushrooms is of course about another, it's, it's another thought, but the waves and the mushrooms have something in common that I find fascinating and that I, uh, that I find that it's an answer to this question, how, how to approach to photograph nature. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe you think. <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a question. Why do you guys choose to my project? <laughs> because I, I have a, I have a lot of kind of project doing. So. Yes. Why, why no, why no Tokyo landscapes, and why no mm. my portrait project? I think it was uh, before because one of the wish we had it is it still is to bring the discussion also about photography for what we for what we do and trying to also step out to the contents somehow and we were trying not to consider architectural photography as some way to represent buildings as they are as objects and so we know that you had a lot of projects on architecture. Of course, you also did projects for CCA. But it was an opportunity to collaborate with you on projects that we felt were particularly intense and particularly long, because actually they, 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 they are not ending. And this is something that uh, it's very important for uh, for an author to have something that goes and keep himself uh, forever. So maybe this was, uh, was uh, one of the reasons, but uh, there might be others. You also want my answer. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think there's always, you want to know, uh, uh, you look at projects and you have questions, and when there is more questions, it's more interesting. So I had much more questions about the waves, why? And about the mushrooms, why? Uh, how does it relate to, to photographing a city, photographing portraits? What is the reason that you can do all these things next to each other and it still feels natural? You create a certain freedom for yourself and at the same time, it's still very much within the practice that, that you do. So th this was for us the interesting part. I'm doing. I'm doing uh, both uh, projects. I'm doing uh, continue uh, now. Uh, maybe next year or entire year. So I'm doing. So I think I'm looking for a, a reason why I'm taking photographs of the mushrooms and the webs. So. But you gave us a hint when we were visiting you, and because we asked why is it not trees and why is it mushrooms, about the fact that the mushroom is, is, is a, like a poem. You were explaining that you have, that it's the smallest element of, uh, of, of what you could still photograph of nature somehow. Mm. I, think, I think mushroom is very small, a lot of kind of things. And I prefer, uh, like a literature, uh, I prefer short story rather than big, huge stories. So, uh, do you, 
ルノーあーロシアンあーリテラチャーチェーホフアントニン・チェーホフ、どういうのいや、ヒ、ヒ、ジャスト・プロット・アバウト・ショート・ストーリー、オンリー、アンドン・スクリーン・スクリーン・プレイ、ノット・ノット・ヘミングウェイ、オー、ノット・アー・ドストウェスキー、ユナイミン、ソー、アイ・プレファー、サッチャー、アー、スモール・タイニー、シンサム、イッ、アー、インポータント・ミー。This is, by the way, how you are storing them. <laughs> so it's maybe a bit hard to move, but still, <laughs> yeah, John, you will have to explain us about the work. That, so here we are in your studio. Uh, this is in a way where you store your work, no, more or less, in, in the computer. Um, and I think we can start here because your, I mean, your work is very different, but we still feel very much rooted in photography. Even though that might not be the first、uh, kind of an instinct, C could you explain? Could you explain the project of、uh, of your maps? I think、uh, if we start from the point of photography, I was、um, always making photographs, and I was at a certain moment very interested in iconoclasm and turning points in history, where the representation is always under pressure, and you yeah, these images. Of, iconocla of iconoclasm during Reformation, or they always attracted me very much because they are, they are broken, but they are also new images. And sometimes when an image breaker、uh, breaks an image, he makes a new image. I was very interested in that. And then I started thinking about、uh, like these turning points in history. I wanted to have a symbol for World War I. And then I went to do research and I found a map that was used four years. To depict where the fighting was going on. And after four years, this town was totally erased, but it was also erased from the map. And where、uh, from photography, it's always you freeze an image. And I thought, oh, this is actually the first time I see like, time visible. In, and then I was asked for another project about、uh, a possible war in Amsterdam in 2030. And I thought,、oh, I'm, I'm interested in this showing time. I like how to show time, and I was in, that, in those days very interested in the complexity. And I thought, like, if I collect all the maps that have been used during the war by all different parties、um, and how they look at a city during that war,、um, I will overlay it, I will get a very dense, complex image. But you can still read it, so it's, you, you try to you press. Time into one singular image.、Mm. So it started from my interest in photography, and then I got interested in these maps. I had the ID, I went to the city archive. They say, okay, we got a map, follow us. And then we went to a drawer, and he, dropped, he opened the drawer, and there was a map、um, that says, like, every person is 50, every centimeter is 50 persons. and Uh, yellow is Jews, black is non Jews. And you had、uh, maps that depicted where the Jews in Amsterdam lived in World War II. And then I was interested in that because I, you see an instrument that was used for the Holocaust. And then I started researching it and doing a,、um, more research. And I wanted to get that image of the Holocaust back into the entire conflict. Um, so, you can also see all the separate maps that I used. But um, um, yeah, th that's the image.、Yeah. And you see all k i n d of different images where、um, there are also maps that say every dot is 10 Jews. So, there、mm -hmm. are 8,000 dots, and 75% didn't survive the war. And in the sense that we talked about this show, it was the life of documents.、Mm -hmm. So, behind these maps of Depicting where the Jews lived, there are thousands of documents. They went from door to door saying how many people were there, Jewish, age, gender. It's a big list that comes back to one instrument that was used to, to hunt the Jews. And but, now but it's back into the conflict. So here you see also the English map, the German maps,、uh, the American maps where they are going to bomb the. Uh, the, the north east,、uh, west German town of Amsterdam, that was the, during the war. 
So it's 109 maps on top of each other. Very complex image. Yeah. 109 maps, but that's now, or that's... Yeah, <laughs> I have uh, difficulties with uh, finalizing the project, yeah. No, no, but I think this is interesting. So just, just to maybe explain one, one more, I mean, you did it very well, but it's, it's an image of an endless amount of maps that are all maps of proof, of a certain proof, uh, between 40 and 45, so in, in, mm -hmm. in the war, that are overlaid on each other in order to make something visible that you cannot see in one map somehow. You can never see both sides of the, of the conflict. You can never see uh, uh, what, what the Germans were researching, what the English were researching. Um, and then you bring it in this one image that I, I think is still a kind of photograph, uh, it, it's it's hard to call it a photograph in you know with 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 the other authors that we have here, but still I think it is it is. It takes all this uh, uh, well, let's say all the all the dogmas of photography. It has a frame, perfectly produced frame. It is uh, printed on photo paper. You call it depictions of Amsterdam between 40 and 45. It's not maps of Amsterdam, it's depictions. So it is something we have to understand as an image, and this image wants to convey something. But then it's also never complete, which is another contradiction to photography, because photography is normally one moment. So how do you, in which context do you feel that these objects have to be? Yeah, I want to show the conflict, how mm -hmm. the city was viewed. I want to show the agenda of the makers of these maps. And when you have an idea like this, um, and you've, you are going to do research, and you find that, that it really works, the idea that you even find maps that, are, that I never uh, saw, like uh, we all know of the existence of Auschwitz, but not so many people knew that there were these dot maps made by Dutch city servants. So it's trying, like, if we, we refer to it to, as photography, we all know all the photog photographs of World War II that were taken in Amsterdam, these black and white photographs. We feel a lot of distance to it. Mm -hmm. This it shows a different way to look at the conflict I think, and, and it's in full color. So many people in Amsterdam will go immediately to look where do they live. It's an instrument, you know? And it's in color, and there is always this layer between past and present. Uh, I could say something about it. You, you see the Judenviertel, I, I will translate it, Jewish quarter, Jewish uh, canal, Jewish street. So that's German maps where they put the Jews together, there is the museum square where on resistance maps there it's called like shelters. So there's all this information of how every party looked at with a different agenda during the entire conflict of war. So it's about uh, the complexity of war. Um, and I think my main interest is to, in images that I want to make, like uh, the German word Denkanstoße, I think it's so beautiful. Um, I don't know how to translate it into one word, but like it's not food for thought, but it's thought in, in a very, yeah, in one dense word. Um, so this, the, you know, this, this is a very complex image. I know nobody will understand it totally, but it will give away a lot if you start reading, if I help you, if, uh, so um, that's, I think that's what I want from images. Um, and that was what I wanted from images when I was still a photo photographer. <laughs> photographer. Yeah, I took my last <laughs> photograph in 2010 because these images yeah. take so long to make and this one is like 13,000 hours or something and I made more cities. So hopefully, I didn't sell my uh, camera, so hopefully I'm going to, but I don't, don't have time now. But can you explain, because the first map that you made of Amsterdam, and Amsterdam is the place where you live, so it's your hometown where it started. Uh, it is in the Rijks, Rijksmuseum, but it has a lot less information than this one. So the, the map that is in the exhibition, the how many it printed version of the same work is it? There are now four. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, I made seven versions till now. Uh -huh. So every time there is an exhibition, I think, ah, let's look into the conflict more, or let's 
revisit and... Uh, but you consider this also part of the work, to keep changing? I mean, to keep adding, not changing. Yeah, adding. but the conflict of World War II is so um, yeah, enormous that you become very modest as a maker. How can I say that after 13,000 hours and one it is finished, why should I finish if I have something more to add? I don't know why. I know, I know many people want this. The, uh, galleries would want it and uh, art historians, they, they hate it. That, you, mm -hmm. that it's like, uh, but uh, they want a date and a number. And, uh, but I'm like, yeah, the, if I can tell the story better, let's do it. And uh, during the project, we also try to approach and uh, think about the documentary, like photography as a documentary uh, language. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we were talking before, the possible question is, why do you need photography for, uh, for your project? Maybe. And the other one is, is this the extreme uh, document in which uh, you completely hide yourself as, uh, as an author? It seems like you want to disappear as, uh, as an author and, uh, yeah, and the, gaze, the gaze is <laughs> yeah. the one of the cartographer. Yeah. So the documentaries is also somebody, the author that tries to hide himself. Then never yeah. succeed, but <laughs> well, I think uh, maybe the, the, it's something the, the, that uh, in, your, uh, in your project uh, happens uh -huh. or you wish for it. I think we were talking about the camera as a, as the, the telephone as a camera. When that came, I thought, oh, that's the liberation for photography because everyone will be at the right spot at the right moment and they will take immediately uh, photographs. And I thought if uh, social media comes, the image bank of the world will be like billion, why, a billion times bigger with a lot of kitsch. I thought, okay, then I can work on a few images like draw back as an answer to uh, this, this, this enormous amount of images that would come. Um, is that, that's not really an answer, but that gave me... There's no uh, answers. The other thing is it's a lot text-based. Sometimes yeah. we need to read the map. Sometimes we need to get closer to the map. It's very big. Yeah. Maybe you haven't... Uh, uh, I don't know if you said that, but it's the, 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 um, the print in the show is rather big. Yeah. But it doesn't keep the, the visitor far away. It gets the visitor very close. Or not. I don't know. Yeah. This is what yeah, I felt. Probably because uh, of the sharpness, you get close. And uh, because of the vagueness, when you have a bigger image in the maps, they, they tend to go, become unsharp. So there will be this focus on this sharpness. So you want to get close to the details. Maybe you, the last thing you have to tell of which cities that you all did. Okay. The same type yeah. of map, no? Not the same map, but... Yeah. So, you so have Amsterdam was the first. Yeah, very specific. Which uh, you're still uh, working on? Yeah, well, it's very specific about the Jewish uh, population. Uh, Rotterdam, I, I wanted to give an answer, like not literally point at uh, Amsterdam all the time, look at what happened to the Jews, but show what conflict, uh, like Rotterdam is bombarded and like the half of town uh, burned, 800 dead in mm -hmm. Amsterdam, uh, 60,000. So bureaucracy is much more, uh, is deadlier than, uh, than war in that sense. Um, and then I made Berlin, then I thought Warsaw, that's where the biggest ghetto is, was. Um, Wuch, second ghetto, uh, Rome. So I have this ex of evil and uh, the victims, so from London, Amsterdam. It's a big project. And then in an exhibition, you can see them all in one. If that ever comes, then uh, you could <laughs> see that. But then, uh, yeah, I don't know if, uh, if that works like this, if people are interested in seeing the details. Uh, I have one thing to add, like uh, text can also be an image, you know, and I'm very interested in text as an image. Yeah. Like uh, I have this uh, work that I made about um, Yes. about the atomic bombing of Japan. I, I was thinking about this all the time when you were talking about the mushrooms, that I was thinking yeah. about these mushrooms. Um, in the, in the but show, there is for this, example, there is there this are, document. No, that in the show there are two projects in which we can also talk about this, like the Atlante by Luigi Ghiri and the uh, Richard Misraj uh, project where texts appear as an image. And yeah. it's very interesting in, in relation with the, your, uh, your uh, work. Yeah, I have this very this simple simple example is when 
the draft of the speech that they would give after the first atomic bombing, it's done six days before Hiroshima, and there is just a line, and they fill with pencil later in, three, three hours ago, and then Hiroshima with pencil, and they actually write Hiroshima, then they have to correct it, and then it becomes really an image, you know, that it's a document, but it's also text as an image. Maybe one last? <laughs> no, I would like to have one last. <laughs> One last question. On the <laughs> 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 it's okay. Because, no, because these are all cities. Yeah. So these things only, because, <laughs> you know, we, we are also talking about the kind of depiction of urbanism and of, of, of architecture, but all these maps are cities. Is there any other way to... Is there also non-cities in which you could do this? I think. Uh, but, but you uh, did not do, so this I is the kind of... No, a, yeah. Because I, I'm, at time-wise, I was busy with these uh, things, and uh, I thought the, the conflict of World War II is very, um, you can use these cities as passport totals for the entire thing, like the difference yeah. between London not occupied, heavily bombarded, Warsaw treated very badly by, yeah. by uh, the Germans. So I thought this is like the, the entire conflict or the main protagonist uh, by the city. Yeah. Are you ready, Mayana? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so same question for you what is what is the project you're showing could you explain um, it's um, to one book and one um, book project and from the book I say book because it was um, printed in 2014 when you approached me to sort of like think about and discuss with you what was not in the book or why certain things are in the book. Um, like what is the project? Is it what is in the book or are these different projects? Um, I went to my storage and I was really astonished that I found everything sort of like the mock-up, the ins, the outs, the lists. I found new chapters of um, possible new books. Th but this but didn't book fit in this book. The, the book is called Stairs, etc. The book is called Stairs, etc. And the etc. means it's a it's a set of of subjects that deal with man-made objects things. that you can find in in yes. public and private yes. space. Yes. Um, photographed over, it starts 87, I think, um, until 2014, and not photographed by purpose. I think this is what um, interested me, that all these gray boxes you saw before, they're filled with envelopes, and in every envelope is one film with the 36 <coughs> prints from this film. And um, I discovered that probably I have used 5% of my archive. And then I was, okay, what's happening with that when I'm gone? And I thought, okay, it has to be thrown away because this is not a self-service tool or something I want somebody to edit projects out of. So I thought, okay, probably I should just work more and get things in order. And for this um, stairs, etc project, I discovered a little bit a way how I could work with the archive that the work that the archive or the print physical print in the archive remains visible, which was by, for instance, keeping the um, having as less as design decisions as needed. Um, one decision was to um, to keep the format of the photographs as they are in the archive because when they were printed in the United States, they were large, and when they were printed in Japan, they were probably small, and when they were printed in the um, 1990s, they were small, and then they started to have a wide frame, so to sort of like um, keep this and, and just try to, to make a rhythm through these kind of like um, chapters that look now like I've been looking for these objects to photograph, but actually I have not been looking for anything at all. So it's, it's a way to try to make sense to material that is around. And it's a bit 
Uh, I think I'm not the only one. I th probably photography has a lot to do with poetry somehow. It's like a photograph then is, or an object on a photograph is like a word in a, in a certain language and they make no sense unless you try to bring them in some sort of order that they develop a rhythm, that they develop um, an atmosphere or a narrative and that can be very minimalistic or they can turn to kind of like absurd absurdity, um, but I think it turns to, to some sort of closer observation, so it, it forces the viewer to think what is it I'm seeing and why am I seeing this and, and um, why is nothing happening. <laughs> yeah, please, uh, and uh, after our studio visit, uh, maybe a question is what uh, happened, because one of the possibilities we gave our, ourselves visiting you as a photographer and artist, he, uh, starting from a specific project, was that that might uh, develop into something. To know if uh, the project had uh, a path which were left, or if it could generate new new things. And um, and, the, and this was your case, because in, in the show there is something that uh, is made on purpose for, uh, for, this, uh, for this project. And so, how that uh, happened? It was, um, well, I don't know if, if there are artists among you, like there's something like studio visit that can be very empowering. So someone comes and looks at what you're doing, right? And probably asks the right questions. And, and then by looking, giving it a bit of a closer look, like they said, for instance, um, a seamless archive or actual seamless or, and then I discovered these were the titles we were trying to find for the book. And then there was this moment when you said, but you had made other books and in the end, everything comes out of that archive and probably the archive is some sort of the, um, the, the pool where you derive things from and so you can make could make many more books. So what are the books that you plan to do before you die? And I was, aha, uh -huh, okay. Instead of thinking, um, I did this and this is the first book and it's very old and kind of like has been done in a different time and then what that book and that book and now comes the really interesting book I'm right now working on, right? I, it changed the notion for me. I, I started to learn that the books have a presence in the moment you're looking at it. Right, so they can all be laid out on a table, and some are. I mean, I published a book. My first book was published, I think, in '96 or something like that. So they have the same um, kind of like actuality in a way, but probably the meaning and the perception changed because it was perceived differently in uh, '98 and nowadays. You, when you look at it, but it was so interesting for me because um, normally I, I work in. Besides of that practice, I have a practice that has a lot to do with installation, and also when I showed photography, and that practice has a lot to do with the, the room and the space, and probably photographs I take in that context, and that I mix with photographs from the archive, but you can only sort of like perceive them when you're there physically, and, and then see the exhibition. And that's an, a moment I like, but here with you, I started to like the idea that this is all present at the same time. And that gave me some motivation to kind of like um, dig in these um, lists. They're also on display of yeah, sort of like possible yeah. other books of, um, of um, just rethinking what I've been, uh, what I, yeah, what I, what I had in mind when I was working on that book. So we did, and you made me work hard. Thank you, CCA. <laughs> <laughs> to commission a new chapter or a new book, and um, I think we, I, I think I have one. Ah, this was <laughs> the one you didn't choose in the end. I, I didn't do no. Yeah, mm -hmm. I developed many more chapters, and they were like nature was also a topic that came up. They were just very boring. See, um, yeah, very boring. Why? <laughs> they were very boring because it's so hard to organize. Um, like trees, you could organize trees into trees with leaf with leaves, trees with, um, that are green the whole year, trees that got a certain shape by humans, um, trees that lost their leaves, trees in snow, um, large tall trees, round trees, okay. um, trees were whatever, they survived the blizzard. But in the end, it's always the form that probably um, 
connects the trees. But I remember that, that we had this conversation already in your studio and then you said, ah, it can only be trees in front of walls. Y <laughs> yes, because there is this, um, um, I mean, anyway, I'm not sure if this is true, but, but by working on it, this is a bit what I discovered also by looking at different chapters with different people. And, and um, instead of trees in front of walls, which, which would be a sub-chapter of the trees chapter, um, we discovered that stones had, had um, something in common. Um, they could be painted by men. Men use it to, whatever, build things. Um, they have... Um, some are important in a um, religious context, some are just like crazy and big and broken and miracle stones and secret stones. So, so there's more like cultural impact you could perceive in, in the pictures um, with stones than for instance in the pictures with trees or moss or something like that. Um, yeah, stones can be. But there is one thing, I think all, everything that you photograph, you photograph almost with one type of view. So it's almost, if you photograph a chair, you do it with almost the same distance. Yeah, it's the, very democratic. The object is in the middle, it has a flash or no flash, but it, 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 it always feels like the importance of the object that you photograph is, has the same kind of attention and that's already for since when? Since eight? Ever. Like this picture on top has a horizon that's very rare. That was in 87. I think uh -huh. I really tried to take pictures. But it's incredible that you have a consistency of photographing everything in the same way since 87. And then it goes in the archive. Mm -hmm. And because you do it so consistently, you can pull it out randomly almost and, and, and connect them to each other and they all become somehow one. But was this a conscious choice from the beginning? Mm. How, how do you I also have to this? be careful that it doesn't look old. <laughs> <laughs> but in a way, <clears throat> I think if I take mm. out the, the, the worst pictures and the ones that are really kind of like, um, um, yeah, I can manage to, to keep it kind of fresh. It, I think it has to do with my, I'm, I'm more an anti-photographer than a photographer. So like photography was not my choice. And I had, I wanted to have um, um, kind of like a, a work that is, um, has to do with technology and that translates something, the process of um, like how the body inscribes into whatever, um, if you think of uh, contemporary dance or making drawings, so it's always a direct translation of the body. And I kind of like try to find that same directness through like a lack of control and a certain closeness. For me, it's not so much what's depicted, but the way um, kind of like the body or the gaze approaches. <laughs> no, no, sounds very weird. <laughs> No, 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 but what, what, uh, what most of the people do not know is that, uh, that, that there is also, you could say, chapters of, of legs or of body parts. There is a that, book, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, I understand them almost in the, same, in the same way. So you can have a piece of a leg next mm -hmm. to a stone, next to a, a kind of a, a boring chair, next to a, and, and they all become one thing, and this is very conscious. Um, yes, sure, it's a decision. Uh, and when did you do, do this decision? I think I this is the I question I want to really ask you. This was really when I started, when I, that's, that's very back in the 90s when I, I, st I studied photography because there was nothing else I could study. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, Switzerland has no academy. Switzerland has no, ha no art universities that's really new. I mean, Switzerland comes a bit from in, in that direction you have the Bauhaus tradition of the Kunstgewerbeschule so my option was either um, graphic design or photography there was no contemporary art and there was no film and there was no no um, contemporary dance and um, so this is a bit how I started to to work by 
kind of like using these cameras that um, were very interesting at the time because they had very good quality and type of lenses, but they were these sh shouldn't point Japanese cameras like um, where you could sort of like work automatically and the camera would just kind of like gather whatever it would, but there was an image in the end. But it was not one controlled through my like eye or perspective because framing was never something that I enjoyed. So it was more a way to find a way to make pictures without being completely um, bored myself. Mm -hmm. and, and how many chapters are still in the archive? Approximately? Um, this is when we go back and clean up and <laughs> decide. <laughs> I don't know what, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, when, when you make, when I make a book, I'm, I never wanted to make a book about stones because I think there's so many books about stones that are very interesting and <laughs> that are also made with a certain idea, either to speak about, like this, we've been speaking about the Roma publication, this friend of yours, Oglaya, who made the book um, about stones forgot her name. The, um, so we have the microcosmos, the macrocosmos, the, the chopped images, so where the graphic design and, and the book and the, um, so you lose dimensions are completely gone. And here in, in this one I try to have the, um, the stone as an object somehow and it has to be recognizable in terms of size, for instance. Hello. <coughs> Hello, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, this is the first time I'm seeing the work um, of, of either of you, but um, in this short time of this interview, I see a kind of lineage in the work, and I hope it's not a terrible cliche, but <clears throat> I think there's, there's a notion of existentialism and Sartre that talks about the transcendence of the ego, and it seems that in, in all the work there is something about a desire to sort of eliminate the author of the work. Um, the f photography of the waves, for example, um, it's, it's always from the same angle, the same position, but it's actually the wave that is creating the photograph and not the photographer. Uh, in, in the latter work, we see sort of a collection of similar objects always photographed from the same angle in the same way. So everything is kind of brushing up against the scientific method, a kind of scientific approach to the work. But simultaneously what it achieves is a kind of um, the, the elimination of the authorship and somehow for the work to speak for itself. Is this something that rings true or? I think it has to do with the, that all the works try to apply a certain concept which comes after the images are made somehow. So there is a kind of um, rigidity, right, that p probably cools down what could be emotional. It's not linked to, if you look at Takashi's waves, it's not linked to, oh, Takashi was at the beach and he took a picture, right? It's, it's, it, you, you look at it like, okay, it's always the same. No, actually, it's different days. No, actually, wow, he's crazy. He's doing that since uh, 13 years. Like, like, you start to think about what happened, but it's not that you see that you're, I think that if you would have just one and then a cactus, then you would say, okay, it's a nice cactus, or he was at the beach and the wave was beautiful, but you think, or you experience it by yourself because you are the one that replaces the person behind the camera, right? When you look at the picture. But there is, you can understand that someone has thought <coughs> somehow or analyzed something and have probably imagined that this is um, cooling the thing down. An idea. You know, oh. when you see a like object, do you sort of pair them up or do you, you know, do they sort of exist in this kind of language based way or do you really just sort of like focus in on, you know, mm -hmm. An, an object of interest that is just of, some, somewhat of interest, and mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't have to stand in for all objects. Or mm -hmm. I can't do it in four mm -hmm. four words, I'm afraid. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, I hope I get the question right. But it's probably more like how Ori is photographing. I'm sort of like wandering around and then it's kind of like a way to learn like how, where, where I am, what I see, what's going on. It's some sort of like I'm processing. And um, um, so in the end, I'm not very interested in the images. So, so I get these films and that's also a reason why I'm photographing on film because otherwise I would delete everything in digital. It would be so overwhelming. And, and it's very private, some sort of like, I think this moment of working is, is, is not um, scientific or cool. It's very private and I'm a bit ashamed and I'm like, oh no, and then this lousy portrait and I chopped the head off and I did this and I did that. So I, I just stopped evaluating them. They go in an envelope. And then sometimes I, I really need to, to forget about any intention and any kind of um, experience I had. Right, like this morning when it was raining in uh, Montreal. So then I start to I start to discover images where I'm like, who did that and what is it? But I'm interested in the image. So it's like um, I, don't, I don't know if this is correct, but it's not the the cool way of having um, these objects that I analyze now. It's more um, trying to find some kind of like consistency that allow another person to probably read. Yeah, I see similarity in your practice and mine. And my question is very simple. Um, do you ever pass up a rock if you see one and don't <laughs> photograph it? That's, yeah, that's, this is now with the rocks. I mean, it changes a bit because when I was working on the book, then I'm analyzing, right? Okay, I, mean, I think that's part of any artist's practice. You, there's these moments you, you, you work and you're on a flow and everything goes very emotionally and you're filtering and, and then there's this moment where you start to analyze. Okay, so what is it we can see and what is what is missing and why is it missing and would I have an interest in kind of like catching up somehow. So, so when we decided to do the um, stones and the proposed to see and they were, yeah, that's Let's, yeah, do that. Then I was, okay, there's so much missing. So <laughs> Switzerland, we have very like many stones. And then I start to research, and like, how did these stones come to the city of Zurich, and why are they there since 700 years? Ah, they came with the glacier, like with the gletscher. Then I go and look up all the stones, and then I go and find them. Same with sort of like, m there's some mon monuments where cars would drive around. Many of them are made with stones, or like in gardens where you try to hide and you don't want to see your neighbors. So, so I was like, the whole countryside is full with that stuff. So I, I went to look for it, but then I, I'm forcing it and I'm taking pictures, and then I'm really bored when I see the pictures, and, and it's hard. But of course, I drive by and I'm. Like, I should stop, I should take a picture, that's fantastic. And then I try to find a way to park and then I'm just like I'm getting completely lost. I can't give, go from A to B anymore until I decide, no, it's over. You made that so you don't have to, uh, and then I probably get in a way relaxed so that I could take normal pictures of normal stones. <laughs> but after just, if I can add something after stairs, etc., it was really, um, I kept on photographing stairs, et cetera, and it was, but if there will, will it never be published. I mean, we made that book, so it's over. You don't have to do it. And after half a year, I allowed myself to start again, just because it's some sort of an encounter to me. I don't know. I like this ephemeral or kind of like, yeah, it, it's a way to see the world probably, I don't know, and give it paid attention. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, my question would be, uh, before all that uh, hard work that you put in agencing the photos, taking them, thinking about them and putting them together, the, um, we are very much in a, like Takeshi was saying, uh, taking picture very fast, going uh, in a very, very uh, fast manner. How much time do you put or do you even realize the contemplation you have to do before taking stairs or waves or mushrooms or would it be uh, for me the maps that you were taking in, in picture are it seems that you how can i say you emotionally you 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 had a very uh, close link into it you jumped into the project most likely you fall in love very quickly with it uh, there is not much contemplation was it true is it true or not 
And is the other work more, that's it, needs a lot of contemplation, yes. Of course, before taking pictures, uh, waves or mushrooms, I, uh, I thought uh, about the uh, concept and uh, how to uh, photographs and then what kind of uh, things I have to take, but I thought, but uh, you know, I always uh, try, to, try to photograph very uh, simply, uh, fast, uh, my uh, intention. So, as I said, I prefer, I would like to think about photography after uh, taking a photography, after the uh, film development. Is it okay? <laughs> Absolutely, yes, 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 yes. Um, I can answer. Uh, like I was uh, when I was in the academy, um, I turned to photography not because I I, I wanted to escape the army. Um, didn't do any <laughs> photographs before, so I was. It's funny how it's no, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's my uh, aversion against war, I think. But um, I had to go into the army, and I it was an easy way to, or the only way to to get something out in a quick time, you know? With photography you can quite get to something in a short time. Um, and I was uh, taking photographs on the street all the time, like hunting, and always felt that I, I came too late or I missed something. I got so nervous of that after my academy. Then I thought, okay, I want to change it all around concept first. And then I started making a series about uh, disaster areas. So I knew exactly what I was going to take a photograph. I did only thing I didn't know is how it looked. So then I went there and I went multiple times. And uh, and with this uh, with this war thing, it's like yeah, you 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 find a uh, no. Somebody asks you a question, and you think you start thinking about it, and then you do research and you come to something and you're amazed by it and you, you ask some other person do you know anything about it and when they don't know you probably more people don't know and then you find a new way to tell uh, something about something that is like for me it was very interesting to to show a different image of world war ii 70 years after that conflict you know like try people try to to make people think in a different way, show things in a different way. Um, so it's always concept-based with me. I, th I think to learn if something is a project or not is, I mean, there are some things like commissions somehow, sometimes, that someone invites you to go somewhere and photograph for a specific context. I mean, I think we're all not working, no, maybe Takashi, but working applied in that sense that um, we, I mean, I'm not sorry. Um, but saying, like, what is a project is a difficult question because I think a, a project is um, probably more what is an idea, like what, what you, what you want to spend your time with or where do you go. Or, but with me, it's always linked to um, either where I go or um, what I discover, but I would never say it's a project until something's developed in the end. But I learned when something becomes a project and it's when it's becoming very labor intense <laughs> and time intense, so, but, but yeah. I think we were joking, saying like, sometimes a, a commission can be something like, uh, a problem you didn't have before. Before you had the and commission. And so it's a challenge if the commission <laughs> is like huh, giving you an answer which for a problem that you didn't have. And that can mm -hmm. be very challenging, but it can also be like, yeah, I didn't have this problem, so I bought it. But sometimes yeah, but it's... Somehow all, all three of you are, um, are having these, well, let's call them projects. And they, are, they seem to be projects that, that did not end and probably will not end, and probably will go on for many years. And this is a bit anti 
anti the project somehow because the project intent somehow means you somehow work towards a kind of an end, but you all work towards a kind of a, to keep it open. Ah, I can add more. Ah, it could be also this. Ah, actually all the books together are this project. Ah, there can be new waves, there can be more mushrooms, there can be this kind of a wish to be endless is, is, is to me interesting. But that, that's, that's, I think it's when something really interests you. Why mm. end it? Uh, like, if it really interests you, then it's fantastic to keep on working and thinking about it. Uh, but Bas, maybe it's not, it's not the accumulation is the problem, but it's the term project which is the problem. And maybe we all just enjoy our occupation, occupy ourselves with something, I don't questions. There are questions you want to answer yourself by making images, no? by making more images, by adding, by understanding them in a different, in a different way. This is, this is at least how I f feel that, uh, that a lot of this is. They, these are not projects that are closed. They can be reinterpreted and the reinterpretation help, happens by the artist rather than by the critic. No? So I think this is the interesting part, that, that you can, by adding, changing it, by adding, uh, uh, putting it back in time, putting it back in our time, uh, relating it to questions that are now and not before. No? So to, to not make it into an archive, to not make it into something that goes in a box in an institution. No? This, is, this is, the I think, the interesting part about doing something that you could say a project for life or a project for a long time. Do we have <laughs> some <laughs> last additional points? Yes, there's one. Um, it's a general question that, that could apply to, um, to any of the panelists today. I'm curious to know if you've found ways to deal with the oppressing feeling of having such colossal amount of work um, to deal with after full careers like you have. It's easy to trash. <laughs> Good. I, do, I don't feel... I mean, Probably it's our generation, but I, we all don't feel old, but then you figure out, well, I did this 30 years ago, but then I still feel like this is not a career and this is not a work, like an oeuvre in that sense. It's just like constant trying to probably get something done that is probably interesting after, still after 10 years. I don't, I don't have this vision of having a, it's more like there is much that can be done, but why should it be done? Why should I make another book? Or who has an interest? And as soon as something pops up or a topic, I think like the mushrooms is a super important topic. Probably that was not um, Takashi's first intention when he started photographing them. But, but there, I think there are like waves also in, in what is in discussion and where is the discourse. And um, um, So I think photography is always embedded in somehow in society, in culture, in, in discussions. I mean, this work will be in the context of, um, I don't know, can mushrooms save our planet? Or um, like all these environmental questions. Um, I think there's also, you ha often happen to be in context where you don't want to be. I made a book about birds and a bird flyer. It, <laughs> Uh, that the mushrooms are very photographic because uh, they are only there for a very short time. You have to go in the right moment. When you pick them, after one hour, they are not anymore like this. So it's the perfect subject. It's a fruit of the mushroom, yeah. Yes. So it's <laughs> <laughs> Can I say one last sentence probably? So that's what... I like so much about your exhibition because you speak about the process. So it's about an artistic practice, like the practice of a photographer that has to deal with all these issues and it's not about 
um, specific um, um, themes. Usually photography exhibitions then would be about a theme, right? And I think that's uh, one of the big achievements that um, that we can think and rethink our ways of working also. 